Hello everyone, welcome to Brain Blitz Audios. Today, in this episode of BitSat Practice, we're going to be looking at some questions which were asked in chemistry in BitSat 2018. Now, these questions are pretty important and we would like you all to watch the entire video completely. So, these questions are from chemistry and they're asked in Bitsat 2018 and let's begin with the first question. The first question is metal which can be extracted from all three of these ores dolomite, magnesite and carnelite is. So is it A sodium, B potassium, C magnesium, D calcium. Now note that the question is asking from all three of these ores. Now let's start investigating. So in order to know which metal can be extracted from all three of these ores, we should know the chemical formula of these ores. So, dolomite, the ore, it is basically consisting of magnesium carbonate and calcium carbonate. So, the dolomite contains magnesium carbonate and calcium carbonate. And then, if you look at magnesite, that is an ore which is made completely out of magnesium carbonate and then you have carnelite which is made out of potassium chloride and magnesium chloride as well as six water molecules so if you notice in both in all three of these magnesium the metal magnesium is present in dolomite it is MgCO3, in magnesite it's MgCO3, and in carnelite it is MgCl2. So therefore, among these four options, option C is the correct option. Now option D is present in dolomite only, so it's incorrect. Option B, K is present in carnelite only, so it's incorrect. And sodium does not occur in any of these, so option A is also incorrect. The right option is option C, magnesium. That is the metal which can be extracted from all three of these ores, which are dolomite, magnesite, and carnelite. Next question. Semiconductor materials like silicon and germanium are usually purified by distillation, zone refining, liquation, electrolytic defining. So, which of these is the correct process? Now, let's look at each process and which metals are they usually used for such are they used for refining so the first option here is distillation now distillation is basically the formation of vapors of particular substance and then recondensing them at another vessel so that you get the pure um, you get the pure product so this is applicable for you know metals such as mercury and zinc so mercury is already a liquid and zinc also has i believe a low melting point i mean so therefore low melting and boiling point so therefore these you can form vapors easily for mercury and zinc and then you can distill them and get pure mercury and pure zinc so option a would be the wrong answer because distillation is primarily used for mercury as well as zinc now what about option d electrolytic refining so this is basically the use of electrolysis so the electrolyte goes to the electrode forming pure material so for example um, metals such as copper and then tin and nickel etc they can be used they are usually refined using electrolysis so therefore option D is incorrect because you know, the metals used here are copper, tin, and nickel, etc., and not semiconductor materials. Now, what about option C, liquation? Well, liquation is applicable on materials such as lead, tin, and antimony, so therefore option C is incorrect. The right answer is option B, zone refining, so semiconductor materials such as silicon and germanium are usually, you know, purified by the method known as zone refining. So what is zone refining? So suppose you have a block of silicon, you heat a particular portion of this rod and then as you move the 
heater away from the particular portion, the impurities solidify. I mean, the imp the metal solidifies faster than in the impurities, so you form crystals of the silicon or germanium at one end, and the impurities are carried over to the other end. So when you continuously wipe this rod, in the end you will get uh, lots of impurities at one end of the mat material, which you can then cut off. So therefore, option B is applicable for semiconductor materials such as silicon and germanium, and that's why it is the correct option. Now. Let's look at this question. You need to give me the pos we need to find the possible structure of X in the following reaction. So in this reaction you have benzene, that is C6H6, reacting with D2SO4. Now if you are confused about what D is, D is deuterium. And this is basically hydrogen with two neutrons instead of one. So it's basically an isotope of hydrogen, so I, uh, they have the same atomic number but different mass numbers. So what will be the correct reaction here? So um, over here you can see that the reaction takes place in heavy water, there is no other reagent present, and you have benzene reacting with D2SO4. So in this scenario, what happens is that there is the occurrence of substitution. So basically, there you have substitution of the hydrogen present in benzene with deuterium. So when you substitute hydrogen, so it's basically C6, you know, at 6. So all of these have an H in benzene. All the carbon atoms have one H in benzene, and then these hydrogens are replaced by deuterium. So therefore, option D becomes the correct option. Now, option A um, occurs during sulfonation, so therefore it is incorrect. B and C also are a product of sulfonation where you have to heat the mixture with sulfuric acid. I mean, you have to heat the you have to heat benzene with sulfuric acid in order for that to occur, and of course, the correct option would be option D because there is no heat here; only there is water, heavy water, and then there is D2SO4. So this forces the hydrogen to get substituted by deuterium. So option D is the correct option. Next question: Which of the following is not a member of chalcogens? Now, chalcogens are usually referring to group 16 elements, and these chalcogens usually form ores. So these, the, the name chalcogen means ore forming, so therefore they usually refer to group 16 elements because they form a lot of ores. Now, group 16 elements include oxygen, <clears throat> selenium, I mean sulfur, selenium, tellurium. And if you look at the, you know, the group further, you also have polonium and livermorium. But then polonium are, and livermorium are not chalcogens. The reason why is because they are radioactive. So therefore, their properties are not very well known. So therefore, <clears throat> if you were to look at the following options, the option which is radioactive will not be a member of chalcogens. And over here, polonium is the only option, so option D is the correct option. Option C, option B, and option A are oxygen, selenium, sulfur, and oxygen. They are present in chalcogens, and they're not radioactive. So they're group 16 elements, which are not radioactive, so therefore, they are chalcogens. So option D is the correct option here, because we're asked to find out which of them is not a member of chalcogens. This is the final question of this episode. We need to pick out the wrong statement among the following. So you, you have four statements. Statement one says nitrogen has the ability to form PTPT -PT bonds with itself. Number two, it's that bismuth forms metallic bonds in its elemental form. Option C states that catenation tendency is higher in nitrogen when compared to other elements of the same group. 
And option D states that nitrogen has higher first ionization enthalpy when compared with other elements of the same group. Now, the, um, the electronic configuration of nitrogen is 1s2, 2s2, and 2p3. So, as you can see, the, the valence shell is 2p, and it has three, you know, electrons. And p holds a maximum of six elect. I mean, yeah, p holds a maximum of six electrons. So therefore, you would have um, p having three electrons at half filled, as half filled. So p, a p orbital which has three electrons is half filled. Now. According to the Hunt's rule of maximum multiplicity, the uh, order in which these electrons enter the orbital is as such. So if you have a p orbital, then first the orbitals get half filled on all three of them, then the next electron goes inside. So when they are half filled, they're already very stable. So therefore, nitrogen has high stability, and so therefore it should have a first ionization enthalpy. So you need to try to pierce an electron out of a stable configuration. And also since nitrogen's valence shell is 2p, it's quite small, so that means you have higher ionization enthalpy as well. So option D is a true statement. And since it's a true statement, this statement is incorrect because we need to find the false statement among here. Now, if you look at option A, option A says the nitrogen has the ability to form P pi, P pi bonds with itself. And that is true. So nitrogen forms a triple bond. So then you have a P pi bond. You have two P pi bonds and then you have an S bond. So therefore, that's why N2 is quite stable and it's in gaseous form. So option A is correct. And so option A is true, so that means the option becomes incorrect. Now option B says that bismuth forms metallic bonds in its elemental form. Now bismuth is coming under group 15, but what happens is that it's at the very end of the group 15, at the very end of group 15, so therefore it has less electronegativity. And when you have less electronegativity, you're, uh, you tend to act uh, with more electropositively. So therefore, you, you have a tendency to lose more electrons. And when you tr lose electrons, you usually form metallic bonds in their elemental form. So therefore, the statement is true, but that makes option B false. The right option is option C. Catenation tendency is higher in nitrogen when compared with other elements of the same group. This statement is false. And the reason why it is false is because nitrogen has high repulsion amongst its electrons due to its small size. So therefore, the catenation tendency in nitrogen is actually quite less. So therefore, option C is the correct option because it is the false statement and we need to pick out the wrong statement among the following. So that concludes this episode of BitSat Practice. We hope you found this episode interesting. For more of our useful and interesting content, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, which is Brain Blitz Audios. You can get access to our notifications by hitting the bell icon below the video. If you want to revisit our videos on BitSat Practice, you can only you can just go there below the video and then hit the link in the description. So until the next episode, take care, stay safe, bye-bye for now.